Hello, my amazing creative friends. Today I'm here for Rita Barricat Designs. We're going to be playing with her amazing stencils. Hi, I'm Jessica Sanders. Welcome to my channel. So first, I would like to say welcome to everyone from Rita's following. I'm so happy you're here. Rita sent me this beautiful package of amazing little goodies. So before we get started, let's take a look at what Rita sent me, and then we're going to play with the stencils. So first off, she sent me these really cool die cuts. These are called Beautiful Blooms, the ones with the flowers, and then the little girl with the wings is from Mystical Creatures. And this is the little unicorn girl from the same set. You can find those all in her shop. I'm going to leave the link to her website below so you can check it out. And then she sent me these really cool stencils. Now these are special stencils because they're made so that you can't tell you use the stencil when you're finished with the work. You use your mechanical pencil. Anyway, I'll get into all of that later. So these two six by six inch stencils are sisters. That's what they're called. One has the flower and one has the hearts. I think there's also a star. And then I have this larger stencil, which is super cool. I can't wait to use this in like my big journal, you know, it's going to be great. So let's get started now with trying out these stencils. I'm really excited. I do enjoy drawing faces myself, but sometimes I just don't want to do that. I'd like to skip it or I don't have the time. So that's a great time to use these stencils. So as you can see, I'm using my mechanical pencils and drawing in the little slots, the little spaces, and it's going to be a dashed line when I'm finished. So I decided I would use both of the six by six stenciled girls for this project, the sisters. They look adorable together, right? Right? Am I right? Yes, I'm right. They look adorable together. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to do that. It's super easy with this. It's like you're putting down guidelines and then you can just connect the dots and use it as is, or you can make small adjustments to fit, fit more, whatever your style might be. I just really had a lot of fun trying these out. So I wanted my girls' faces to be leaning toward each other and overlap toward each other. So that's why they're positioned the way that they are. And I'm planning on using watercolor, which has been lately my most favorite medium, <laughs> to do some painting here in just a minute. If you're one of my regular followers, thank you so much for being here. I want to introduce you to Rita Barricat. Now look at her. Isn't she beautiful? That lovely hair. I love it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyway, she is an amazing artist. She loves magical, whimsical things. And she has like a whole selection of die cuts and things for your art journaling and paper dolls. How cool is that? So I hope you will stop by her website and give her some love and tell her that I said hello while you're there. Okay, let's get going with our watercolor portion of this design tutorial. So I'm using Josie Lewis watercolors. She's from Instagram. If you may know her, you may not, but use the watercolors that you have. I wanted my girls to have green eyes, but I didn't want them to be the exact same color of green. So I mixed just a little bit of blue into that sort of lime green that I already had going. And yes, I did use green for the shadows. You can do that because when you layer watercolors and you put other colors over them, it's going to change the color. It glazes it and just makes the color a little bit different, but it also brings your painting together. You may also notice that I used blue for shadows and now I'm using purple. I'm not concerned with skin tones. I'm not really interested in that when I'm working on this particular painting. I could do skin tones. I have done it before, but for this, I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to be more whimsical. I'm thinking of Rita and I'm thinking of beautiful whimsical girls. And so I'm trying that take a mixed media approach with watercolor and also incorporate colors that you might not necessarily normally see. So I used the pink for the lips. I also used that on the face. I used some yellow to add like this idea of sunlight shining down on them and I'm just adding more and more layers as I go to create more and more depth and shadow in the face. The light is already there. It's on the paper. It's coming through. So what I have to do 
than with my painting is to create the shadows. One thing I love is to have light in the eyes and so I always go for that when I'm painting eyes and so I put the color just across the top and then I use a little bit of water to fade that color down to the bottom so that the eyes are just glowing and I just really love that effect. It's so fun to do and it creates such a really luminous fun just eye color. So it's about time to start working on the hair. The way I work is I work in one area then I move to another and you see me hopping all around um, and that allows the layers to dry some in between while I'm working on something else. So I wanted to choose a color for the hair that went with <laughs> what we were doing. So I chose this sort of muted down uh, purpley pink color for the older girl, what I perceive to be the older girl. And then for the younger sister, I chose a brighter bluer purple. They're both kind of a purple color, but they're just a little bit different and they go with the colors that are in the face already. And I just started painting on and adding brush strokes and adding some splatters and some just nice, I don't know, layers of color. So I'm not quite finished with the faces yet. I will be going back to work on those a little bit more, but I just needed to add the hair. I just wanted to see how it was going to look all together. And I added a really dark concentrated color right around the, the neck and under the chin area so that you get that nice shadow effect and then layered over more darker value to create texture in the hair. And once I did that, I saw that I needed to add more shadow on the face, especially around the hairline. It just wasn't quite dark enough, enough contrast for me. I'm going to bring in my Posca pins and add some details. I like to add some really dark marks with my black Posca pin, and I'm going to bring out the white one in a minute too. And you can use it straight over the watercolor, so that's pretty fantastic. Just be sure that your watercolor is completely dry before you use your Posca pens because you don't want to ruin those beautiful Posca paint pens. You can use any paint pens. They're just acrylic paint pens. I just love the Posca myself. And I also decided to bring in a Micron for some fine thin lines that I can't get with my Posca paint pen. I'm adding some extra little doodles of hearts and flowers that are inspired by the stencils that I had that already had the hearts and flowers but I just wanted a little bit more of that and I wanted some flowers on both sides and some hearts on both sides so I just drew those in and I kind of copied Rita stencil. Now that all of that is dry I'm going to add in a little bit of a light bluish purple watercolor as shadows around and under the eyelids which will really make those eyes pop. It's going to be fabulous. And then even more shadows around the eyes, around the side of the face, underneath the nose, just and the neck, just to add more and more depth. Those are very light layers. You can see through them, but they, as you continue to layer, it just adds a little more depth, a little more depth, until you get to the place where you want it to be. Now it's time to add some white highlights. One of my favorite parts to do, adding those catch lights to the eyes, a little highlight above uh, on the top of the eyelid, on the nose, if I covered up some of the paper, and just really adding some pop and shine to this little painting. Oh, I also added it to the hair. I forgot to mention that. It's not like white hair. It's like highlights on the hair, and I like to do that. It's a lot of fun down to the end of this painting and I wanted to add some color to those little flowers and hearts that I've drawn. This is an acrylic ink pen. It's, it's just similar to a Posca, just a different kind and uh, it's great for just scribbling in and back with the Posca, just adding little details to these little flowers and I'm almost finished with this little painting that I can put into my journal. I added a little bit of green and yellow watercolor for the centers of the flowers and that's pretty much it. I am done. So I hope you'll try this technique with the watercolors and Rita's stencils. It's so much fun and so easy to do and I think you'll really enjoy it and I can't wait to see what you do. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Rita. It's 
fun and fantastic and I loved it. 